So Taxi UK is a charity that provides support for people with ataxia and their families. We have a helpline, information leaflets, and importantly we provide an opportunity for people with this group of rare conditions to actually meet, because in many cases it's quite isolating and people might not have met anybody else with the condition before, might feel like they're the only person in the world. So it's really important to bring people together. We were also very engaged in setting up the specialist ataxia clinics and that is an example of where we really sort of drew in the patients and the clinicians and consulted them in what would be the best thing to how we set up these specialist clinics. So um, we engaged with, with them to sort of set up a number of criteria for these clinics to comply by. And there were things like we needed to have a neurologist with a large patient caseload and many years experience of ataxia to run such clinics. And patients particularly wanted uh, follow-up appointments, so not just being left and discharged, but being seen after an, on an annual basis and seeing the same neurologist, so that continuity of care that's very important. The ataxia in particular did our uh, uh, very a group, a very uh, rare group of disorders are really, really important to, to see um, many of uh, these patients with such a rare disorders to understand better the complexity of uh, the symptoms and therefore try to understand how to manage. So it's a much more uh, an evidence-based um, uh, approach uh, rather than uh, seeing patients with, with such a rare diseases and um, having difficulties in disentangled the complexity. So uh, one thing is as well is uh, really relevant, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, defining the taxes is to have um, uh, patients with have uh, speech and uh, problem in communicating. So it is really relevant to uh, see the same team with an expertise uh, in ataxias that can communicate effectively uh, with the patients and also to identify um, symptoms that can be then treated uh, either with uh, drugs or uh, with devices to improve quality of life. Seeing so many patients with uh, such a rare disorders this is um, a great opportunity for research to um, then inform and uh, empower uh, patients to make their own choice to participate in uh, uh, different research. We have been extremely successful at the Itaxia Centres to, uh, for example, recruit in uh, record time, you know, according to uh, the farmer who sponsored the trials. And, uh, here with me is uh, Nigel Kilvington, who has been as well involved in uh, the design of the protocol. So uh, patients are not only in the ataxia centre have an opportunity to be recruited uh, in uh, this uh, research project, but also indeed to um, have a voice in the design of the protocol. Uh, I was diagnosed 10 years ago which was following uh, a holiday where I noticed my speech deteriorating and uh, I was having problems walking downstairs. Uh, my doctor referred me to a neurologist who then ran various tests and sent me for a second opinion to London, to the National Institute and they ran blood tests and there was a positive diagnosis. I've been asked to review with some input on the protocols of some of the other trials. Also through ATAXA UK, I have been very fortunate to be a member of the scientific advisory committee as a lay member. As well as funding research we're also very engaged in helping uh, the research process. So we have a registry of a large number of ataxia patients so we're able to assist researchers in trying to recruit for studies 
and that's trials, natural history studies, but also importantly um, studies that maybe don't appear as exciting such as questionnaires which are also very important in the whole research process. So that's one aspect of the work we do. Another feature of the uh, London Ataxia Clinic that was really successful and then was rolled out in other centres was the involvement of volunteer scheme. So that are, these are Ataxia UK representatives who are volunteering their time and are attending the uh, Ataxia Clinics. And we have with us today uh, two of the uh, volunteers at the clinic, Anne and John Chapman, who will tell us a little bit about their role. Uh, my link with Ataxia is because our son was born um, 1970 and um, age three I knew there was something wrong with him and um, I was a health visitor at the time and I knew that there was a neurological group ab about Ataxia and I knew we were looking at a neurological problem, root and um, we didn't get a diagnosis properly for Christopher until he was age 18 before he went to university. And then after Christopher died, we, ca we continued with Ataxi UK, went to all the conferences with Christopher. And then after when Christopher died, we knew there were volunteers. And as a parent, you actually amass a huge amount of information. Um, and it was really quite useful to be able to come and be a volunteer and to um, help. Lots of people come to the clinic, it's exhausting, they are emotionally exhausted, they're physically exhausted and if it's the first time to see Dr Junty then um, they need the time to actually listen to all the information and um, recover afterwards. And so sitting quietly and talking through, has anything been missed? Are there various problems? Um, ATAX UK has a very good helpline. Um, we try and um, make sure that nothing has been missed and that the clinic is um, covered all of the aspects of how people are going to carry on with their lives. Uh, our role at the clinic is uh, twofold. One is to ensure that the people, uh, as we represent Taxi UK, are aware of a Taxi UK, that we are fulfilling their needs if they're already aware, uh, and to make uh, sure that they know all of the types of services that uh, a Taxi UK can provide to them. And the second one is to uh, give feedback to. Dr. John T and uh, the authorities in terms of how the clinic is received by the uh, patients. So we sit down, as Anne has said, talk to them quietly, let them reflect on the uh, session they've had with Dr. John T, pick up on anything that they've suddenly remembered that they've forgotten, uh, try and advise them to be better prepared next time with questions so that they don't fall into that trap or to remind them how to get in contact with Dr. Junty and the rest of her staff if something really bugs them in between their appointments. Yeah, I understood the really important and crucial uh, relationship with partner, with, in, in partnership, uh, working in partnership with uh, patients and patients group since uh, my, the beginning of my career. This has been then, uh, this approach has been carried out until uh, these days and allowed me to uh, run successfully uh, many research projects, including the natural history, as I mentioned before, and uh, uh, more uh, recently uh, uh, clinical trials. So yes, it's uh, really uh, very important. Atasike is also very involved in research and we have a, a research uh, programme where we fund research projects and we have a scientific advisory committee to advise us and as Nigel Kilvington was saying he was actually a lay member on that committee and to us it's very important to involve patients in, in all aspects of the work we do and importantly in research in helping us decide which is the most relevant research that would uh, have an impact on people with ataxia. It's been noticeable as a volunteer and having seen how Ataxia UK has progressed and seen 
the way, the big step up in the research that's going on, not just in this country but around the world, that actually those that are asked to take part in research really feel valued and actually they come to the clinic um, happy to be asked to come to the clinic and um, despite the fact that some of them have to do long journeys or it's it's usually a day for a lot of people and um, that they have um, definitely um, felt valued that they're part of this scheme.